all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so i am looking in the comments for some nice broccoli discussions so i would leave it in the i don't like broccoli either type of discussion all right so let's start the discussion today is about a an in vitro study that means it's not in the humans it is in the cells in the lab brain glial cells and i'll explain what these are if what researchers did was they put pfizer vaccine on the gl- brain glial cells and i'll show you they are important defense cell they are important supporting cells of the brain tissue and when the pfizer vaccine was put with them it caused a reduction in their capability to respire or breathe or use oxygen and secondly it reduced their capability to make energy and it reduced their capability as a result of these reductions to defend themselves in addition to this it increased their possibility of dying or apoptosis and the researchers said that the changes in the cells normal healthy cell the changes in these cells were very similar to the chemical changes that occur in cancer cells according to the severity of the cancer so why did they do this these researchers are actually trying to see that messenger rna vaccines at some point are going to be useful for cancer cells or not because one of the target of the messenger rna vaccine is to try to cure cancer so they were doing that research and here is the result of that it's a preprint it's an in vitro it's a polish study beautiful study so let's talk about it so this is drbean.com in the description of this video there is a link to drbean.com youtube plan one of the best plans you can get 1000 videos for a ve- for a fraction a price that is even lesser than 100 dollars so you would actually enjoy it so take advantage of this this is the study so thank you for to the patreon bean who shared it with me this study says decoding covid-19 mrna vaccine immunometabolism in central nervous system human brain normal glial and glioma cells by raman imaging so gl- glioma are the tumor cells glial are the normal cells raman imaging is a new imaging technique that the researchers were trying to use to see these changes this is the pdf this is a definition of what glial cells are i would show them too as well this is cytochrome c this is an enzyme that we would discuss in our discussion today this is adenine nucleotide or one part of messenger rna a part of messenger rna which is adenine nucleotide and this vaccine when put in the brain cell also changes the production of new mrnas which are our cells normally need to make our mrnas to do their function so that possibly alters our cells signaling and functioning mechanisms as well so these are the references let's start the discussion so these are the gifts for humanity they are continuing thank you for being with me i want to go over the conclusion first so the summary is done let's just look at the conclusion then we look at some more details so why are they doing it they said we showed that new tools of raman imaging we present in this paper raise exciting possibilities for new ways of understanding links between pathways of cancer immune response and metabolism recognition that regulates these pathways so remember that they were not trying to figure out what happens with the vaccine to the brain uh, normal brain they were trying to figure out the vaccine's impact on the cancers especially brain cancers and so they are very proud of the raman spectrometry spectro, spectroscopy it's a new way but check this out this is uh, that it's an in vitro study we observed the effect of the messenger rna vaccine on bio distribution of different chemical components that is various chemical components in the brain bio distribution is a distribution inside the cell in the nucleus in the cytoplasm and so on particularly cytochrome c cytochrome c is an enzyme present in our mitochondria mitochondria is present in our cells mitochondria is very important to make energy plus it is very important for the death of the cell pathways or to block those pathways mitochondria can release cytochrome c 
from their attached area. So mitochondria have cytochrome C. Imagine you have a purse and in the purse are coins. These coins are cytochrome C and the purses are mitochondria. If those coins are spilled from the mitochondria, then the cell thinks that I should die now. This is like if you lose money, then you decide, you know what, I've lost money, I don't wanna live anymore. That is what mitochondria does. So cell death in part is dependent upon the processes that use cytochrome C. And they said, we saw this in the human glial cells, and I'll explain what these are, in their nucleus, mitochondria, lipid droplet, cytoplasm, rough endoplasmic reticulum, and the membrane. What they're saying is they saw cytochrome C, which is a very important enzyme, to have been reduced almost in all parts of a cell. That is a serious problem. But again, please, this is an in vitro study. This is not an in vivo study. That is, it's not in a body, it's in the lab. We showed that messenger RNA vaccine changes mitochondria by down-regulating cytochrome C. It reduces cytochrome C. That's not good. Resulting in lower effectiveness of respiration, which then reduces the production of ATP and usage of oxygen and the electron chain. Electron chain is, I've done that discussion in detail in the past. Electron chain is a set of enzymes that are present in the mitochondria and their function is to use oxygen and other uh, molecules to finally make help make ATP. If that chain is disrupted, and cytochrome C is part of that chain, if that chain is disrupted, we have a problem. Our mitochondria is gonna get damaged and the cell death can occur, plus we cannot make ATP correctly, we would be in trouble. So here by we, what do you mean? The cells. So lower effectiveness of respiration, oxidative phosphorylation and lower ATP production, it can lead to, so this is an important line, it can lead to lower immune system response because immune system response needs proper energy, it needs oxidation reduction pathways, it needs phosphorylations, so all of those mechanisms can go down. That's serious. But I keep in my head counterbalancing it to say, well, this is in vitro. So as much as this could be concerning, we should also keep balancing it as well. Now, imide concentration, imide one, so or I, there is, there is an enzyme, and I would once again go to my diagrams to show it. There is an enzyme in mitochondria whose job is to translocate adenine nucleotide. Adenine nucleotide, you can think of that as a brick that is used to make RNAs or DNAs or messenger RNAs. Our genetic material and the formation of that would need adenine. Adenine is also needed for making of the, the energy, adenine triphosphate or adenosine triphosphate. So adenine is an important molecule. Somehow, because of the Pfizer vaccine, the transporter, the molecule that picks up adenine from one part of the mitochondria and brings it to the other part, that transporter does not work correctly. So that means production of messenger RNA goes down, which will mean cell functioning will go down, which will mean cell would become less valuable and more prone to dying as well. So that is another thing that they saw. Then they saw messenger RNA vaccine modified de novo, de novo lipid synthesis. So within the cell, we make lipids, fats. Those fats are used for signaling within the cell. They are saying that we saw that the fat production or lipid synthesis reduced. That means the cell's signaling mechanisms became impacted. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It depends. If it's a cancer cell, maybe reducing the signaling is a good thing. If it is a normal cell, maybe reducing the signaling is a bad thing. Then it also depends upon what is the kind of signaling that we are changing. That would also decide how good or bad this could be. But they are seeing lesser signaling which is also not, in general, a good thing. Then they say, sorry, let me explain it here. The role of signaling function of lipid droplet increases, which alters the signaling, not lessens. The observed alteration in biochemical profiles upon incubation with Pfizer-BioNTech in the specific organelle of the glial cell, so nucleus, mitochondria, cell membrane, cytoplasm, lipid droplets, 
are similar to those as we observe in the brain cancer versus grade of aggressiveness. What does this mean? What we're saying is, as we observe brain cancer cells, and as they are more and more aggressive, these kind of changes are observed more and more in them. So vaccine-induced changes were very similar. So now let's see a little more in depth, depth a little more. So here is the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. Imagine this is a big dish, Petri dish, in which we have various kind of brain tissue cells. What are those cells? For example, this is a glial cell called oligodendrocyte. What is an oligodendrocyte? An oligodendrocyte's function is to make covering or insulation plus the pro it is necessary for propagation of the, the nerve impulse. So myelin sheath is what we call it. The myelin sheath in the brain and spinal cord is made by the cells called oligodendrocyte. And myelin sheath is very important. If myelin sheath is not present, we develop multiple sclerosis. Or if it is not present, we develop a lot of kind of diseases where brain doesn't function correctly. And they saw that these cells, oligodendrocyte, were not functioning correctly because, number one, they need lipids. And number two, they need, of course, ATP and oxidation reduction. Those all the functions were down. So oligodendrocyte had a change in their function and reduction in their capabilities. Then there is another cell that is called astrocyte. This is also a glial cell. The astrocyte wraps around blood vessels. It helps make the blood-brain barrier. Imagine if we have a pipe, that pipe has a leak in it, and you wrap your hand around that to, to close the leak or kind of put a band-aid with your hand on the leak. That is the same thing. Astrocytes have little hands and they put those hands on the, on the open areas on the blood vessels so they reduce or prevent the leakage of substances from blood vessels into the brain. So they're important in making blood-brain barrier. And astrocytes function also gets impacted in the same way as I discussed before. The cytochrome is changed, the amide I is changed, lipid droplet synthesis is changed, and so on. Then another kind of glial cells are called ependymal cells. Ependymal cells or ependymal cells are present in the lining or of, of cavities in our brain. Our brain inside has cavities. Those cavities allow the formation of central, sorry, CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. That fluid is very important for the healthy functioning of our brain. The cells that help produce that fluid are called ependymal cells. And they are also glial cells. And they also get damaged. Should I say damaged? Or they also get altered by the vaccine's behavior. Once again, if you said, what are the alterations? They cannot breathe correctly. So respiration goes down. ATP formation or energy formation goes down. Plus their nucleotide production goes down. Plus their lipid synthesis and the lipid signaling mechanism gets altered. And this happens throughout their organelle, that is in the nucleus, in the cytoplasm, in the membranes, and in the mitochondria. Then a very important cell in the brain is microglia cells. Microglia. Microglia cells are actually brain's macrophages. Our brain does not allow the immune system cells to come in. A normal healthy brain does not allow immune cells to come in. So instead of that, it has its own immune cells. And so the macrophage equivalent in the brain is called microglia. Microglia cells or the macrophages are very important for immune and they need to be able to make energy and respire correctly and have oxidation reduction pathways functioning and make messenger RNAs a lot. Plus they would divide as well. So they need to make new DNAs as well. And imagine if they get impacted in the same way. So microglia or the brain's macrophages go down as well in this. I don't want to say they die, but their functions alter and they become prone to functioning less, to defending less, 
and possibly easily dying. So that happens. So then the question is exactly what are the changes? So this is a mitochondria. There are millions of mitochondria on the sides of our nucleus. So if this is a cell and this is a nucleus, on the sides of the nucleus, there are mitochondria, energy houses are sitting next to the nucleus so that when the function is occurring, they're providing energy, they're making ATP. So this one mitochondria is here. I have opened it up over here. And what happens is mitochondria has an external membrane. Imagine this is that purse that has coins in it. So there, there is an external membrane. Then within the, the external membrane, the bigger pouch, there is one more pouch, one more purse within the purse. So that is called an internal membrane. And then within the internal membrane, this red thing is called the matrix or the fluids and chemicals of mitochondria. The cytochrome C and imide I, these two molecules we talked about, they get impacted. They are present on the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Their function, cytochrome C's function, as I've now mentioned it many times, is to help with the energy production plus oxidation reduction pathways. The amide I is present here and its function is to take adenine and bring it out. So that is also important for the production of messenger RNAs. So these guys get impacted. Their, their number, their amount reduce. So then what happens if that happens, if the amount reduces? So reduced oxidized C cytochrome, cytochrome C. Oxidized cytochrome C is a form, oxidized form of the cytochrome C. This, this enzyme does oxidation reduction. Reduce respiration, reduce apoptosis, that is cell death, reduced ATP production, and this happens in the nucleus, mitochondria, cytoplasm, membrane, and lipids. The, the reduction of cytochrome C happens everywhere. ATP production is only in the mitochondria, so that would only happen here. Similarly, apoptosis chain only starts from the mitochondria, so that happens there. Although in the cytoplasm, there are things called ubiquitin that can start the chain outside as well. But anyway, that's a different discussion. Here, these changes to cytochrome C occur throughout the cell. Then amide I reduces its function, as I said before, with the messenger RNA. Increase in lipid droplet signaling and synthesis. So the signaling mechanism within the cells, they change. And then they say the chemical change is similar to the brain cancer changes versus grade of cancer. Now, some considerations. What does this mean? Number one, it is not yet a peer-reviewed and accepted study. It's a preprint, number one. Number two, it is an in vitro study. So when we looked at the brain shrinkage or size reduction, global size reduction with the uh, loss of uh, olfaction or smell in mild COVID cases, that was actually in the patients. This is not in the patients, this is in vitro. So that is the only part which is kind of not 100% appli applied to in vivo. Then in vivo, vaccine entry in the brain still needs clarity. I do not think that so far there has been anything in normal healthy brain that has shown that the vaccine enters the brain. So that is still being a, an area of research. We'll find out more. So these are some considerations to have, but this is a kind of interesting and concerning study as well. From author's point of view, if you see here, we showed that the new tools of Raman imaging we present in this paper raise exciting possibilities for new ways to understand links. So they are happy about what they have done and shown. There is a concern here. So this is a study, if you see here, this is on BioRxIV, and they say right over here, a reminder, they have not been formally peer-reviewed and should not guide health-related behavior or be reported in the press as conclusive. So this is the discussion. Thank you very much for your time. Please do me a favor. There is a link in the, descri in the description of this video. 
if you would like to support this work, you can support it. There are links for buying me a coffee or a PayPal or becoming a patron. In addition to that, there is a gift for you as well. There is a link to Dr. Bean premium accounts. So if you check out the prices, I think you'll be surprised. And that's a one-time lifetime membership. So you would you will be excited. So with this, thank you very much. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'll come back online for a chit-chat. I have been traveling my whole day today, so small chit chat, but I'll come back online. Thank you very much. See you soon. So Doug says, is there a different chat channel? Yes, but I haven't yet activated it. I activated it last week. Hopefully this is now working. We'll test it tomorrow. Today I'm gonna to come back online on, on this YouTube channel. If you have any questions about this study, please keep them for the next discussion. Bye-bye for now.